Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your global weather extremes for Wednesday. And we are tracking the remnants of what was Hurricane Ida and Hurricane Nora. We're also tracking three other tropical disturbances, high pressure around the planet and the places with the highest amount of rain coming up today. So let's start off with the Misery Index. This is the temperature map around planet Earth. Now, it's called the Misery Index because it's all about how you feel as a human being. So red shows it feels hot. Blue shows it feels cold and no color in the black zone means it's just sort of normal temperatures. So it's a little bit subjective. Not everyone will agree, but basically this is the hot, humid zone through the tropical area. So that's not surprising. Uh, extra heat, though, in this zone, which is not surprising either. We see that a lot. And over in the North American side, it's this zone as well, which is, again, following a pattern that we've been seeing recently carrying on. Also, the humidity left over by Hurricane Ida as it dredged up um, that southerly out of the Gulf of Mexico, now going all the way up into parts of Canada as well. So we kick off with the temperatures at the moment, the extreme heat, and we go into North America. So Ida is lying off to the northeast here, but the humid airflow goes all the way up the eastern side of the Rockies and right into Canada. Parts of um, Alberta and Saskatchewan have got that heat. Just jump over to British Columbia, much cooler for you, um, right down and towards Vancouver and Seattle, lower temperatures, but the heat picks up from about San Francisco southwards and very hot weather through that area there with temperatures um, around 30 to 40 degrees Celsius or 90 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Similar story in parts of Mexico as well. As we go over to the other side of the world, the usual parts of North uh, Africa, very hot at this time of the year. Also around Saudi Arabia, Arabia and Iraq, but a little cooler over in the United Kingdom and parts of France and Germany, Luxembourg and Belgium, those areas, because we're seeing a large high pressure zone out near the UK, and that's driving in at this stage a northerly. So temperatures are down a little bit there, and that's where we kick off our next map. This is the air pressure map, and it shows this very powerful zone of high pressure that's right over the top of the United Kingdom and also Iceland. But it is driving in this cooler airflow as you go into parts of Europe. That's why we're seeing those temperatures all sort of down in this zone right here. But this high is actually the most powerful high pressure zone in the northern hemisphere at the moment. So on the air pressure map, you can see here 1038 hectopascals or millibars. So that's quite a strong, powerful high, especially for summer dominating that part of the world. And if we flip the earth right around and we go to the southern hemisphere down near where I am in New Zealand, there's another high, the most powerful one on earth, exactly the same air pressure, 1038. So we've got two highs, both basically on opposite sides of the planet right now um, with very high air pressure. But look at this on the other side, south of Australia, 935. That's over 100 millibars or 100 hectopascals between those two air pressure systems. Very normal. The Southern Ocean gets stormy at this time of the year. Let's take a look now at 24 hour rainfall accumulation going into Wednesday and or across Wednesday. And I've got to say, uh, there is good news and bad news for North America, for, for the United States. We'll start with the bad news. This is the remnants of Hurricane Ida pushing into Pennsylvania in particular right now with some very big rainfall totals jumping in through there today. So there could be flooding as that system continues to move through and up into the northeastern side of things. So that's not the good news. The good news is out over here, the remnants of what was um, Hurricane Nora falling apart over Sonora in Mexico and now coming in to parts of Arizona, even going right up into Utah, over into parts of Colorado, New Mexico, and a little bit into parts of California with some heavy falls right there on the edge of Arizona. So that's good news. I mean, these areas have ha are having all sorts of forest fires and air quality problems, um, drought. So getting some wet weather through that air area right there, very, very welcome by a lot of people. It won't be going really much further into Nevada, but it is still around. And then in Canada, there are a few rainmakers as well that southerly pushing through the humidity up here in the north. So parts of Alberta and Saskatchewan getting some heavy rain. And there's a very large 
low pressure system stuck out there over Quebec with more rain falling for you. Around um, Europe we're seeing heavy rain around parts of western Russia, also through central parts of Europe and Spain also has some heavy downpours and that northerly wind or northwesterly coming out of the back of the high is producing a few showers along the coastal zone. And over into Asia the usual thunderstorms down in the tropical zone, um, not as bad as it's been although the western side of India does have some big downpours today. The rest of the downpours are over here around China and and then they're spilling out and over into Korea with some very heavy falls around parts of Seoul and spreading out also into parts of Japan and Tokyo getting some of those heavy downpours. Okay moving along windy weather I thought I'd just take a look at some windy weather that's not really attached to any big low pressure system and this one's actually attached to high pressure. So this is Australia, Queensland, Cairns and Brisbane down here. So we've got uh, uh, Vanuatu and New Caledonia and this big windy southeasterly on the top of this big high pressure zone. These winds are almost gale force, they're just a little bit shy at about 50 kilometers an hour blowing into parts of the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. The other windy zones we're tracking actually around a large portion of um, Canada we're seeing that large low around Quebec it's a little bit hard to get your bearings but here is Greenland and Iceland and this is uh, Quebec and Canada where there is that large low spinning away this is the remnants here of what was Ida Hurricane Ida so it's not exactly a powerful storm but it is still a leftover depression rain is the main feature as that tracks along okay we've got uh, more tropical disturbances to keep an eye on this is the Atlantic Ocean Africa and here is Central America or North America and we we're seeing this new tropical low here. Now this one is likely to become a hurricane based on the latest guidance. It may well do a big U-turn and end up coming into parts of Europe a little bit later on, um, probably either this weekend or next, next week. There's another tropical disturbance here. This one's been named Kate and this one is also sitting out at sea. And then there's a third one just to here around um, Oh, getting into more sort of Central America. As we take a look at the tracking of these two systems, well, this is actually Ida, the remnants of it. So now a tropical depression, it'll be post-tropical once it moves up around New York. And the other one here, Kate, unlikely to become a hurricane. It may do briefly, but it really looks like it's going to be stuck around being a tropical storm or a tropical depression out at sea. Bermuda is just here, so it looks like it's just enough away out at sea to not really pose a problem at this stage. Got to keep an eye on these things, they can move around. We're looking at more tropical storms maybe in the Gulf of Mexico in about 10 days time. Don't really like locking them in that far out, but if I was living in places like uh, Texas or Louisiana, I'd be wanting to pay attention to 10, 14 days from now, there might be another stormy system. Okay, our final map for today, I've been giving you this sort of image of the day over the last um, week or so. This one's a little bit different. I've decided to pick a face. I often see faces in the um, weather maps. So I see two eyes and a, and a mouth, or it could be two eyes and a nose. And where is this? Well, this one here is right over the North Pole. The North Pole is right here. So this is right up in the very top of the world. Uh, you've got uh, Greenland just there. You've got the United Kingdom over there and Europe around to Russia. It's kind of confusing, but this is the top of the world with these three areas of low pressure. That is all from me. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again on Friday with our next Global Weather Extremes update. I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz and for our global viewers, please use our business partners at weather.com. See you Friday.